Please, take pity on an old madman. My master has abandoned me, abandoned his people, and nothing I say can change his mind. Now he refuses to even see me. He says I interrupt his vacation. It's been so many years. Won't you please help? Last I saw him, he was visiting a friend in the Blue Palace. But no one as mundane as a Yarrow. No, no, such people are below him. No, he went into the forbidden wing of the palace to speak with an old friend, said it had been ages since they had last had tea. Oh, and you'll need the hip bone. It's very important. No entering Pelagius's wing without that. All right, then. The courier must have found you. Absolutely not. That wing has been sealed for hundreds of years, and for good reason. They say the ghost of Pelagius the Mad still haunts. Ghost or not, there are reminders of his dark rule that are best left buried away. Watch your feet. Not on your life. It's dangerous in there, and Falk doesn't even like me and Erdy going in every year to clean out the spiders. If you really want to, just be careful of the ghost. He snuck up on me once and scared me sick. It took a week for me to feel better. So many things to do. So many undesirables to contend with. Naysayers, buffoons, detractors. Why, my, my headsman hasn't slept in three days. You are far too hard on yourself, my dear, sweet, homicidally insane Pelagius. What would the people do without you? Dance, sing, smile, <laughs> grow old? You are the best septum that's ever ruled. Well, except for that Martin fella. But he turned into a dragon god, and that's hardly sporting. You know, I was there for that whole sordid affair. Marvelous time! Butterflies, blood, a fox, a severed head, ho ho ho, and the cheese! To die for. Yes, yes, as you've said countless times before. How to rumpf! Well, then, if you're going to be like that, perhaps it's best I take my leave. A good day to you, sir. I said good day! Yes, yes, go. Leave me to my ceaseless responsibilities and burdens. How rude! Can't be bothered to host an old friend for a decade or two. Pelagius the third. 
Now, surely even you know about Pelagius's decree. On his deathbed, oh, and this was inspired, he forbade death! That's right! Death! Outlawed! Inside the mind of Pelagius, silly. Oh, is it your first time? How rude! Can't be bothered to host an old friend for a decade or two. Really? Ooh, ooh, what kind of message? A song! A summons! Wait, uh, I know! A death threat, written on the back of an Argonian concubine! Ah, those are my favorites. Well? Spit it out, mortal! I haven't got an eternity. Actually, I do. Little joke. But seriously, what's the message? Were you now? By whom? Wait! Don't tell me. I want to guess. Was it Molag? No, no. Little Tim, the toy maker's son, huh? Huh? The ghost of King Lysandus? Ah, oh, or was it one? Yes! Stanley, the talking grapefruit from Passwall! I'm wrong on all accounts, aren't I? Ha! <laughs> no matter. Honestly, I don't want to know. Why ruin the surprise? But more to the point, do you, tiny, puny, expendable little mortal, actually think you can convince me to leave? Because that's crazy! You do realize who you're dealing with here. Surely, good guess. But only half right. I'm a mad god. THE mad god, actually. It's a family title. Gets passed down from me to myself every few thousand years. Now you... You can call me Anne-Marie. But only if you're partial to being flayed alive and having an angry immortal skip rope with your entrails. If not, then call me Sheagorath, Daedric Prince of Madness. Charmed. Now that's the real question, isn't it? Because honestly, how much time off could a demented Daedra really need? So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave. That's right, I'm done. Holiday complete. Time to return to the humdrum day to day. On one condition. You have to find the way out first. Well, good luck with that. Is it? Care to take a look around? This is not, I dare say, the Solitude Botanical Gardens. Have you any idea where you are? Where you truly are? Welcome to the deceptively verdant mind of the Emperor Pelagius III. That's right! You're in the head of a dead, homicidally insane monarch! <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking. Can I still rely on my swords and spells and sneaking and all that nonsense? Sure. Sure. Or you could use... The Wabachak! Huh? Huh? Didn't see that coming, did you? Do you mind? I'm busy doing the fish stick. It's a very delicate state of mind. Do you mind? I'm busy doing the fish stick. It's a very delicate state of mind. Do you mind? I'm busy doing the fish stick. It's a very delicate state of mind. Now this is a sad path. Pelagius hated and feared many things. Assassins, wild dogs, the undead, pumpernickel. But the deepest, 
keenest hatred was The attacks he makes on himself can be seen here fully. They're always carried out in the deepest part of his fragile self. But self-loathing enhances Pelagius' anger. Ah, his confidence will shrink. You must bring the two into balance. Wonderfully done. Pelagius is finally ready to love himself and continue hating everyone else. You have headed down the path of dreams. Unfortunately for you, Pelagius suffered night terrors from a young age. Wonderful! Wonderful! Why waste all that hatred on yourself when it can so easily be directed at others? But someone still has quite a bit to do. Hmm? Do you mind? I'm busy doing the fish stick. It's a very delicate state of mind. All you need to do is find something to wake our poor Pelagius up. You'll find his terrors easy to repel, but persistent. Something to crow about. With Pelagius up and about, you're moving right along. We'll both be home in no time. I'm so happy for you. My, what a burden to have carried. But you've done it. You've conquered your own inner demons. Bravo. Um, you, it didn't mean yourself. You meant Pelagius. Well, same congrat. Conquering paranoia should be a snap after that ordeal. Hmm? Do you mind? I'm busy doing the fish stick. It's a very, oh. Good choice! Well, good for me. I find everyone being out to get you so terribly entertaining. <laughs> you might find it less so. You see, Pelagius' mother was, well, let us say, unique. Although I suppose, in the grand scheme of things, she was fairly average for a septum. That woman wielded fear like a cleaver. Or did she wield yeah. a cleaver and make people afraid? I never get that part right. Oh, but she taught her son well. Pelagius learned at a very early age that danger could come from anywhere, at any time, delivered by anyone. The objective here is simple, you simpleton. Use your wabaja to defeat the enemy, but they do the same. Oh, -ho! I thought they'd never figure it out. With the threat gone, Pelagius is under the delusion that he's safe, which means you helped him out, sort of. And we're that much closer to home. Yeah. Do you mind? 
Hmm. Fixed is such a subjective term. I think treated is far more appropriate, don't you? Like one does to a rash or an arrow in the face. Ah, but no matter. Heartless mortal that you are, you've actually succeeded and survived. I am first to honor my end of the bargain. So, congratulations. You're free to go. I have been known to change my mind. So, go. Really. Pelagius Septim the Third, once the mad emperor of Tamriel, now so boringly sane. I always knew he had it in him. Well, I suppose it's back to the Shivering Isles. The trouble Haskell can get into while I'm gone simply boggles the mind. Let's make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Clothes, check. Beard, check. Luggage. Luggage. Now where did I leave my luggage? Master, you've taken me back. Does this mean we're going home? Oh, happy times. I can't wait to... Yes, yes, that's quite enough celebration. Let's send you ahead, shall we? As for you, a little mortal minion, feel free to keep the Wabajack as a symbol of my... I'll just take the damn thing. You take care of yourself now. And if you ever find yourself up in New Sheo, do look me up. We can share a strawberry tart! Ha ha! Ta-ta!